The kit for the glider then is very simple. A bunch of nicely pre-cut foam pieces, equally as we've seen before with the minimum RC kits, some nice laser cut ply pieces. It comes with the motor and the horns for the servos or the kit that you need there. And I also opted for the version that has the servos supplied. What isn't supplied will be a suitable battery and possibly more importantly, one of these miniature receivers. There are a couple of different protocols that you can get this receiver in. This is the DSM or, or Spectrum uh, variant. It's the older Spectrum protocol and that should suit our needs. And we can see that it's four channel, but obviously only two are going to be in use. This also miraculously has built in ESC for the motor. So that's really neat. You'll need to go online and download the instructions or view them on your laptop, iPad, whatever. Uh, they appear to be very comprehensive. We'll go through and I'll note if anything strikes me as being particularly difficult or I have an alternative way of doing things. Stage one then to get the little ply pieces pressed out from the sheet and get those glued together. I'm going to be using Sino for that particular task. Releasing the pieces from the ply sheet is very simple. Look out on the sheet for the tiny little tabs that are left behind by the laser cutter. You just have to neatly cut through those and the pieces will simply pop out. Good clear pictures of what we need to assemble now. As I mentioned, I'll be using some Sino glue to do that. The only other thing that will be useful is a set of uh, small needle files. Some things like the insides of these little holes here where the, where the tabs are may need a little light dressing with, uh, with the file to be able to fit the other pieces in. Using a file on wood may not be cabinet maker's cricket, but whatever works. First part is complete then, nothing very much to note. As it says, pay attention to the servo mounts, get those cutouts on the correct side and the only th other thing is these little curved pieces the one on the inside if you like uh, has an extra hole in there so just pay attention to that otherwise pretty straightforward in the next step we assemble the motor stamped on the back of the propeller blade is b2 that's the way around that that goes naturally we need to check that the motor is going to spin in the correct direction I've done that already and we can see here the lithium cell connections negative and positive and the motor connections the positive is actually blue and the red is ground that was the way round that I found it to be there are two screws provided to secure the motor one is the pivot screw there you just need to make sure that that can move freely without being sloppy and there is a second screw here, which is only there really to prevent the wires fouling with the propeller mechanism. We can see that I have offered the servos up and attached the arms. It's important when I check the motor, I also check that the servo center position was at neutral. This rearward one is the elevator servo and the front one is the rudder of those plugged into the receiver there. It's important to do that because you can't adjust that once the model is assembled. I forgot to mention earlier they say to use the 502 glue to attach the motor. Now 502 is just uh, a Chinese variant of Sinoacrylate and I've elected to use epoxy. What I did was to take my file to the bottom of the motor and rough it up a bit and then apply the epoxy as you can see there. Let me then show you the circuit in operation. Okay, firstly, the transmitter on. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle disabled. Elevator rates off. You can see there when the red light stops flashing that my transmitter is bound. Uh, we're in the neutral position. You can see there the rudder movement. I transferred the rudder onto my aileron stick. That's the way that I work in three channel mode. And there, uh, the elevator. So they're as close to neutral as I can get with the splines on those servos. 
Checking now the motor then. Throttle active. So we can see that it's a nice free movement there. It seems to have plenty of power. Now we can move on to the next step. The next step in the instructions was not at all clear to me. Glue the fuselage side strips and vertical tail to the inside of the right fuselage side panel in the order A, B, C, D, E, F. The fuselage side strips are made of flexible material, no kidding, which can be bent before bonding. Strict accordance to A, B, C, D, E, F sequence of installation can ensure accurate position of the fuselage side strips. What on earth is all that about? Especially when the first piece that you have to apply has got this strange bow tie arrangement at the front end. What on earth's going on? What in fact you have to do is to wrap that first part around the nose that forms the nose. What I did was to first glue this piece in here and then try and bend as best I could. I applied a little bit of heat with a hairdryer and formed that nose around there and then stuck the second part in. The strange bow tie shape is because the nose pinches in slightly at the end. Having done that then you can then use that as a as a guide to placing the rest of the strip into place which is what I'm going to do now. Having got the bottom piece in the others are fairly self-explanatory. You glue the tail in, the piece there, the little piece and this piece which just covers the canopy. I've also glued the servos and uh, the rest of the framework in place. The next job was to connect the conduit which is for the elevator. There is one holder you put in on this side, the other goes on the tail to support the tube there. That's glued in and glue in the holes there to support that tube. This tube being the longer one of the two supplied. The next job then is to glue the second shorter tube for the rudder onto the other side of the fuselage, clearly. With that done then it is time to join the two halves of the fuselage together and things are really starting to take shape at this point. Before I glue that on though, a final check that everything is working correctly. This is the type of battery I am intending to use. Hopefully it will balance correctly. So we can see the server there for the elevator and the servo here for the rudder function. All of that is working okay and they're well centered. Final check on the throttle. Throttle disabled. Throttle active. So that falls back into place. That seems to have plenty of thrust then. I can now go ahead and glue the other side of the fuselage in place. I've gone ahead and performed the next tasks, putting the sticker on the front here, and that acts as a hinge for the canopy there, and also assembled the T-tail. That's all quite straightforward. The little control horns, nothing much to say about those, they fit in quite nicely. And then you have to insert and make up the control wires. There is some heat shrink tubing supplied and with that you just slide it over the ends of the wire and the pushrod clips at each end there and you can see the hoop arrangement for making any adjustments that you need, in this case the elevator. The next task then is to put the little magnets in place which hold the canopy there. So I'll go ahead and do that. After which we'll be on to the wing assembly. On to the wing assembly then, and as it says here, using the end of the provided carbon strengthening rods, score through the half cut line. That may not be immediately obvious to people. This wing I've already done and just placed to check it for fit. I haven't glued it in place yet. You can see here where I've gone along these these lines. These are a little difficult to see but they are in fact cut lines into the foam. 
really all you're doing is to open those out a little bit to enable the wing to achieve the correct curve. As you can see, once those score marks have been made, and I wouldn't go too deep on them, it will bend to the shape of the aerofoil there. So I'll get those glued into place, and the only other thing to do is to put the tips on, and then finally glue it into place and add the strengthening carbon fibre to it, like so. Finally then the model is complete. The centre of gravity is at the front score line of the wing, which puts it here. You can see where I synoed the carbon rod on there. With the battery then just in front of the servo ply plate, I am then balanced upon that point, so the centre of gravity should be fine there. Uh, I recommend for beginners not to operate this model. It is incredibly delicate and fragile. It won't tolerate any wind at all. I think it's maybe better off indoors, but I don't have that facility. At the moment, as you can see, it's not suitable to fly anything at this time of the year here in this region of Spain. We have the Poniente winds coming from the west and they normally continue to blow through to the end of February and even in into the first week of, of March before they calm down and, and disappear. So it's going to be a while before you see this uh, on its maiden flight. Just before we wrap up then, for those of a curious mind, let's weigh the thing. Not sure if you can see that there, 23.86, so 24 grams in round numbers, which is virtually nothing. And with the addition of the battery, that goes up to some 33.18, 33 grams, which is virtually nothing. I don't think I've built anything that light since maybe my Balsa Canberra chuck gliders as a boy. I hope that you'll check back for the maiden flight when the weather is suitable. Thanks for watching.